Hello everyone, welcome to the another great session on Ayavia Bootcamp. This session is in collaboration of DSC Kit and Exophilic. My name is Apoop Jain. Along with me, I have Anirban Dash. So this session is the starting of the markerless AR session. As so far, we have been learning what is marker based AR, and we also have a glimpse of what is Unity and how it is used for making games. So if you have missed those sessions, the link is in the description. So guys, please check it out. So let's dive into the markerless AR. So now it's time to dive into the very interesting world of markerless AR. We have divided this portion into two separate parts. In the first part, we will show you how you can set up AR Foundation for Unity and also make your first basic AR application. In the second part, we will show you how you can make a game with AR Foundation. So I'm sure you are very excited for the second part, but uh, let us go take one step at a time. So for the agenda of today's course, we will be covering what exactly is markerless AR. Then we will give you some examples of markerless AR which are being used in daily life so you can relate better. So basically you have been using markerless AR application without even knowing that those are markerless AR applications actually. Then we will tell you about AR foundation which in an SDK we will be using for developing markerless AR applications inside Unity. Then we will show you step by step how to set up AR foundation for Unity and finally you will build your first markerless AR application. So first what exactly is markerless AR? So in our previous videos, we have already talked about marker based AR. So if you remember marker based AR used to have feature points over image targets, which acted as the uh, anchors for the uh, 3D objects, which we wanted to uh, augment over the scene. But in case of markerless AR, we don't have any predefined image target. We need to find that target in runtime and this Finding is done by the device sensors. So if in your phone there is camera, there are lots of sensors in your phone which actually scans the environment around you to find those feature points where we can actually place 3D content. So let's move on. So some examples of markerless AR would be uh, AR shopping, which exactly is that uh, nowadays when we buy furnitures from online, there is an option that we can try out that furniture by placing the furniture uh, in our living room or uh, dining hall, anywhere where we want that furniture to, and see how the furniture looks and blends with the surrounding. So this is a very handy feature and that is also a markerless app application because uh, the maker of the application or the developer has no idea in which environment the 3d object is going to be augmented so as i was telling that since the image target is unknown so it's a markerless ar after that we have snapchat and instagram filters like which we use every day we have all used the filters in our life and those are very interesting and those are basically markerless ar applications then lens card try on feature that is again a markerless AR application where the uh, feature points are actually placed on your face. So the lens can be augmented over your face. So then there are games like Pokemon Go, which is a very popular game. So in that case, uh, Pokemon Go actually isn't exactly a marker less AR application because it actually anchors the 3D objects or the Pokemons that we see over location. So the GPS is very important in this case. So it's more of a location based AR than a markerless AR, but nevertheless, we can uh, see some markerless AR aspects also in the game. And then the, finally, there are of course educational uses. Uh, this mainly include like uh, in this pandemic situation where we have been locked into our home, uh, we cannot do any experiments, we cannot visualize stuff properly because of the inability of labs or any uh, equipments with us. So in that case, markerless AR or any AR applications can come into use. Uh, like we can uh, augment some uh, experimental stuff. We can show some models of uh, equipments over uh, our phone using AR. So that's a very handy feature. So this is what we'll. So this is the game we will be building by the end of part two of the video, which will be uh, finishing up uh, not by today but by next Sunday. So this is an AR basketball game, which will show you how you can make step by step. So like. This is a basketball, this hoop, everything is 
AR and these are all marker less AR since we don't have any predefined image target as I was telling. So this ball when you swipe it you try to score a basket basically. So yeah. I'm pretty bad at it. So yeah, I missed my two attempts and in the third attempt I finally got it. So that was uh, that was the application that we will be building by the end of part two of the videos. So let's move on. So as I was telling that we will be using AR Foundation as an SDK for developing our AR markerless AR application. So what exactly is AR Foundation? So basically we mainly have two types of uh, OS running on our mobile devices. One is the Android and the second is the iOS. So Google has AR Core SDK which develop, gives AR experience for Android and Apple has AR Kit which provides AR experience for iOS devices. Now as a beginner it's difficult to write two separate applications for iOS and Android so we wanted something which can be cross platform. So this is where AR Foundation comes in. AR Foundation is a package or a SDK developed by Unity. It's a high level API which sits over both AR Core and AR Kit SDK. And actually when you write the AR Found application using AR Foundation in Unity, uh, AR Foundation takes care of converting the code for AR Core and AR Kit. So you can uh, deploy a app developed in AR Foundation using AR Foundation in both Android and iOS. Uh, so it's very handy for begin not only beginners but also advanced AR application because it supports many advanced AR features like light estimation and stuff all are supported in AR Foundation. So with this out of the way let's get started. Apur will actually be guiding you through setting up your basic AR Foundation scene. So I'm sure you are very excited to actually make that game in part 2 uh, of course. So let's take one step at a time and show you how you can augment a cube over a horizontal plane first. So welcome back everybody. As mentioned we will be creating this project from scratch. I will be using Unity Engine to create this project. If you are not familiar with what is Unity you can just scroll down and find the link in the description. This was the first session on Unity getting started with Unity. The, if you are familiar come back here then we will be continuing to making our augmented reality app. So let's get started. I will be clicking on Unity Hub. So you can see these are my few projects which I have been working so far. Uh, make sure that uh, clicking by clicking on install you have the Unity versions installed. I will be supporting a 2019.4 long term support version because it is a much more better version to be working with uh, AR Foundation. So click on projects, click on new 2019.4. Make sure that the template which is being selected is 3D. I'll name this project as my first augmented reality project. I'll use the default location, but if you want to change the location of the project, you can just click on the three dots here and place it wherever you want. So click on create, the Unity will create a new project for me. This will take some time, so sit back and relax. So a Unity project has been opened. As you are familiar, this is the hierarchy panel. This is the inspector window. This is the assets folder. As mentioned before, we will be using AR Foundation to make augmented reality app. So I will just make sure that we can import some packages which support AR Foundation in Unity. So I will be clicking on Windows, Package Manager. Hold on for the package to be loaded. You'll see the advanced written here. Click on the down arrow. Click on show preview packages. It will show all the packages which could be installed in Unity. I will be using AR Foundation, but I will not be using this version 2.1.10. So I will be clicking on the left arrow here 
I will just click on see all versions and just click on 3.1.3. Well, I have been using most of the versions here, but I find 3.1.13 more stable and it is not full of bugs. So I'll recommend you to install version 3.1.3. Click on install, it will get installed in the project. Okay, so AR Foundation version 3.1.3 has been installed in the project. As you can see, when you click on AR Foundation install, you see that AR subsystem has also been installed along with AR Foundation. Apart from these two, we also we will also be needing AR Core XR plugin. Make sure that version are same, that is 3.1.3. Otherwise, the console will be just full of bugs. Okay, so click, uh, click left, see all versions. I click on 3.1.3 and I install it. Okay, so your XR plugin has been installed in our project. That's it. We are done with installing on kind of packages we are going to need for this project. I'll just going to click cause. So let's start making a scene. Click on the scenes. Right click here. I will create a new scene. Create a new scene. I will call it main scene. I'll save it. I'll double click it. And here is a main scene. I will not be using a main camera for this project. So I will click on main camera, press delete button and the main camera is gone. So we have been importing few packages earlier. Let's use them in this scene. We will right click in the hierarchy window. We will see XR and here we go. This is the first thing we will be importing into our scene, AR session origin. Apart from that, I will also be needing a AR session. Okay. What is this? Oh, I see this. There is a left arrow on the left of AR session origin. That means the AR session has some child zone it. Let me see. Okay, AR camera. Let me explain a few things. AR camera is basically the camera, the component which will be accessing the main camera of your phone. That is as we have been seeing my project, which will be, we will be deploying at the end of the video, that you will be opening the app, the app will be opening your main camera. So the AR camera will be accessing your main camera, okay? So let's move further. I'll right click here. I'll choose AR default point cloud. And apart from that, I will also be needing a AR default plane. Wait for a while, I'll be telling why are we going to need this. So I'm going to add some components to the AR session origin, which are needed for the augmented reality app. First thing is AR plane manager. I'll show you how to get it. AR plane manager, I'll type AR plane and here is the AR plane manager. Okay, this script basically deals with uh, whenever you are opening the camera, it tries to detect some kind of plane and this plane prefab. Okay, it is asking some kind of prefab. There you go. This is a prefab which is being AR default plane. Okay, I'll click on AR session origin and left click AR default plane, drag it up and drop it here. Okay, apart from that, I will also be needing AR Raycast Manager. Here it is. I'll click on it and add it. Make sure that these two components are added up in the AR session only and not in AR camera or AR session origin. Apart from that, I will also be needing AR Point Cloud Manager. Okay, here it is. Click left click and it is added. Oh, the point cloud is also access asking us for a point cloud prefab. This point cloud prefab is already present in our main scene. This is a prefab which is being used for AR point default point cloud prefab. I'll click on it, drag it and drop it here. 
Okay. So we have been talking about few things that this will access the camera. This will be trying to detect a plane. Let me add one thing. I'll go right click and create an empty game object and I'll just call it mm -hmm, prefab to be placed. Okay, the R is not capital. I don't want it to be capital. Okay. And I'll click enter. There is a prefab to be placed. It is just an empty game object. I'll right click here, create a 3D object and just click on cube. Make sure that the pre it cube is a child of the prefab to be placed. So far we have been discussing that uh, it will access the AR camera, will access the camera. The session origin is the parent of AR camera. We, we will be using default point cloud and default plane. But I want that if there is some kind of ground plane which is detected, I want a cube there, right? So this is the cube which we will be instantiating whenever we just see the ground plane detected, okay? Okay, let's move on. I will also be use, needing an empty game object. Let's call it uh, manager. I love the word manager by the way. Okay, so here is the manager which is in the main scene. I'll add a new component which will be dealing with the spawning the cube. I'll be writing a new script from scratch. Let me call it uh, AR tap to place. Uh, it is a new script. Click on new script and just create and add. Hold on for a bit. You can see. Okay, here is our script. It has been attached on manager oh, manager. Okay. Okay, here is our script, but I don't want it here. I'm gonna just create a new folder and name it scripts. Okay. Okay, and I'm just gonna drag the AR tab to place script and just drop it into the script folder. Uh, it's a good practice because uh, in future if you're using hundreds and thousands of things in your scene, it just get clumsy. Okay. I'm gonna click on here, yeah, tap to play screen. It's gonna open up in the Visual Studio and we will be writing a first script. Okay, let it open. Okay, our script has been opened. There are a few things which has already been installed, like system dot collection, system dot collection dot generate using Unity engine. Okay, I will be needing some predefined libraries. Uh, you will get to know what are these using Unity engine dot xr dot AR foundation semicolon. Apart from that, I'm also going to need using Unity Engine dot XR dot AR subsystems. Okay, I will be needing these two libraries into the script because I will be using the predefined functions which are defined in these libraries. I will be importing that into the pro into my script. Okay. This is the class name, AR tap to place, which was the name of the script. 
so let me place few few things here i'm just gonna align it here okay first i'm gonna need a raycast manager so i'm gonna type ar raycast manager i'm just gonna call it uh, raycast manager with colon i'm also gonna need a game object which is the most important thing the game object which i want to place on the ground that is our cube so game object object to be placed object to be placed okay we colon okay in the start function as we all know this is called whenever the play button is tapped or in the starting of the application this function is called so i don't want my 3d object to be instantiated right at the moment okay so i'm just gonna type up object to be placed dot set active false colon oh, this will be setting up the set active false it is a function which will be deactivating the 3d object that is the cube because i don't want it to be instantiated right at the starting of the application next we will be going into the update function as we all know this update function is called every frame so i want a list list this list should be of type ARA cast manager. Oh no no no! I'm sorry. ARA cast hit. Yeah, it should contain all kind of objects that it uh, hits. The ray hits. So list ARA cast hit. I'm gonna name it hit points. Equal to new list ar raycast hit. So we have created a list which is of type ar raycast hit. I'm gonna call it hit points, and I'm just gonna instantiate it with new list raycast hit. Okay, there's one error. Okay, new expression. Okay, this is a function. So it's gonna need a curl braces. Okay. But I don't want this list to be instantiated every frame. I first wanna check that if the object to be placed, that is a game object, is set to be null or not so i will type not object to be placed here it is and apart from that i also want to check that if the user has type touched the screen or not so i will type input dot get mouse button down i'll give it a curly braces it shows the boolean input get mouse button down it needs an integer argument it also returns a true true during the frame the user presses the given mouse button so basically it means that i don't i want that the the user has touched the screen once so i'm gonna use it zero okay if these two are true i'm gonna instantiate this list so i'm gonna use, use control x and paste it here i want to instantiate this list if and only if the object is not 
placed. Okay, I'm also gonna need a boolean variable which will be telling us that if the object is placed or not. So bool boolean variable object is placed. I'm gonna instantiate uh, initiate it with uh, false. False. Yeah. But as you can see, this list is being created every frame because it is uh, in the update function. I don't want this list to be created every frame. So I'm gonna give it a if statement. If the is create okay i misspelled it object is placed it's false that is not and i also want this condition to be true and input dot mouse get mouse button now Okay, there's an error. I'm gonna place it zero. Okay, let me explain you this. So, I'm gonna create an if statement. This if statement consists of two things. The first thing is that the object is placed, this Boolean variable should be false. That is, here it is already false. And I want that object dot get mouse button. This returns a true during the frame the user press the given mouse button. So what is happening here is that uh, once the camera is opened and the user tries to detect the plane and it detects a plane and it touches the screen. So this is just nothing but touching down the screen. Okay, this is true. So I'm gonna create a curly braces. And I'm gonna create this list when this is true. Okay. Okay, let's move on. I also want that the Raycast Manager. Raycast Manager, where are you? Here is the Raycast Manager dot Raycast. Raycast function to be exist okay this raycast is a function predefined function in the raycast manager script it is asking for a argument which is a vector to screen point a list of array raycast hits trackable types these are the trackable types are just basically the types of uh, things or planes which can be detected it could be horizontal plane vertical plane etc so I'm gonna give the argument first one was let me remember the look oh the position from where the ray, ray should be casted that is input dot get mouse button down no I don't want the mouse position down input dot mouse position yeah comma it is gonna need a list of ar trackable hits so i'm gonna just give it hit points comma and i want that to okay it is asking for trackable type so i'm gonna give it trackable trackable type plane okay so i'm going to explain this the raycast function it is just basically accessing your phone camera and whenever you tap the screen a ray is just uh, outcasted from the main camera and it is uh, outcasted to the mouse position that is the that is the position where you touch the screen it also uses the hit points to store the uh, points which the ray cast is being hit and it also uses the type which type of planes it is hitting 
that is it could be horizontal plane or could be vertical planes uh let me give you an example suppose you are standing in the uh, dark woods okay or uh, maybe there is no electricity in your house and it is uh, so dark in the evening you ju- you are standing with a torch in your hand you just turn it on okay you when you turn it on a ray is casted from the bulb which is fitted inside the torch it is straight away hitting the uh, maybe a surface it could be anything a wall or bicycle anything so uh, whenever it hits the wall it uh, brightens up the wall right but you can see it is uh, the partial partial plane which is being brightened up that is the uh, it is exactly at the position right in front of the torch which is being brightened up so this is the same thing which is happening here whenever you touch the screen when you the ray is casted from your mouse position that is the position where you touch a ray is casted from the camera it uses a hit point list to store the position of the list position of the ground which is being hit by the ray and it also uses the type which kind of plane is it is it a ground plane or is it a vertical plane okay so one i'm going to give another if statement if uh, it points dot count is greater than 0 that means uh, if you see that uh, uh, there are more or more than one hit points which uh, the ray is hitting i'm going to do the following things i'm going to give a curly braces first thing i want to do that uh, i'm going to create a new variable pose pose i'm going to name it uh, pose variable pose equal to i'm going to store the value of hit pose hit points uh, i'm going to store the first uh, variable that is the hit points um sorry hit points zero dot pose okay let me explain you this pose is basically a variable which stores the transform and the position and rotation of the uh, uh, position and rotation of the point in 3d world space uh, let me give you an example uh, the same example torch is being lit up the position it hits the surface Uh, it has some transform it has uh, some position it has some rotation but it is uh, a little bit different from the unity because it is in the real world so pose is a variable which stores the uh, real world position for unity real world position real world rotation so that we could use it in the unity engine okay so it stores the hit position hit points are zero that means the first point at the first position the ray hits it will have the hit point dot 0 i'm going to store the position into the new pose variable i have just created second thing and this is the most important thing object to place object to be place dot set active i'm going to now change it to true okay this this statement is uh, basically uh, setting up the 3d cube which we were just the main motive of our project was to instantiate a cube on the ground so this statement is just creating the cube into the scene but the scene is instantiated at where let me show you the cube is being instantiated at 0 0 0 but we don't want the cube to be instantiated at 0 0 because when i tap down the screen i want the cube to be present at the position where i tap the screen so i want the cube i'm going to change the position of the cube object to be placed dot transform okay this transform just accesses the transform component that is the transform co- component of the cube 
so object to be placed so transform dot rotation equal to pose dot rotation oh my god what i have done see as mentioned before the pose gives the position of the real world where the ray cast hits right as we all know the pose position gives the 3d world space location of the position as well as the rotation of the ray which hits the ground so i'm going to just give the pose dot rotation that means the rotation of the uh, rotation of the place or the plane to the object to be placed dot rotation this basically means the uh, i'm giving the rotation to the cube that means the ground plane which is being accessed whatever kind of rotation it is having i'm just going to give the cube the same kind of rotation uh, apart from that i'm also going to give the cube object to be placed dot transform dot position equal to pose dot position okay what i have done pose or position it just gives the position of the ray uh, where the ray hits on the ground it is just being accessed by the pose variable and i'm going to store that variable's position into the object to be placed position this position is basically nothing but the position of the cube that is the transformed out position here it is accessing the x y and z coordinates of the position so it is going to have the position values of the pose variable okay this changes the position of the cube to the position where we tap the screen so now we have the cube on the position where we want and this is the end of the script i don't know about you but i am much more excited to complete this project as fast as i can because my script is complete i am going to back to unity okay the let me see the manager script okay there is some sort of error warning is never assigned to and will always have the default null value okay so there is something which i have forgotten we have to make this variables public because i want to access these all variables from unity engine public okay so we are good to go okay here are these first thing it is asking for it is the raycast manager as i have told you the raycast manager is basically the ar session origin because it is having the raycast manager script so i'm going to go click on manager raycast manager i'm going to click ar session origin drag and drop it here object to be placed this is a much more important thing because i want something that is a cube to be instantiated so object to be placed is always something the prefab which i want to instantiate at the given position so i'm going to click on prefab to be placed drag and drop it here object is placed i don't think i should be taking it because once the object is placed it's not going to instantiate the prefab or the queue i'm going to try to access right so i'm going to leave it unchecked okay this is it man this is it guys our first scene is ready to build this is all what i am going to need in this project so i'm going to click on file build settings there are few settings which you are going to need 
first thing is you are going to create an android project so just shift it click on android and just click on switch project it is going to it's going to take some time so hold back and relax okay let's continue first we will see some few player settings that we are going to need but before that make sure to add the open scenes that is the main scene i want to open first i'm going to go click here and control save the scene so that my scene is being saved second thing add open scene into the build set scenes in the build so that you can access the scene go to player settings there are few things to be remembered you can name the product here you can change it i'm just going to keep it that way because i'm going to create my first augmented reality project go down click on vulkan because vulkan is not supported in the ar foundation so i'm just going to remove it from the list by selecting this minus sign hold on for a bit go down multi thread rendering is not supported in your foundation so i'm just going to cross it out go down make sure that the name is package name is same as the com dot company name dot the product name let me check com dot company name my company name is default company and my project name is my first augmented reality project okay the minimum api level uh, for android uh, ar foundation i'm just going to keep it at 24 android 7.0 nugget go down make sure that the android tv compatibility is unchecked remained unchecked because the android tv is not supported by ar foundation right now and there you go it's all what we need okay so if you had done that build you probably would have faced two problems with your cube the first one would be that your cube was too big and the second is the cube is tot inside the camera like it's too close to the camera to be able to see properly so to fix that if you come to the cube you can see that the scale of the cube is currently one in all three axes so one here represents one meter actually so we don't need a 1 meter cube in our room so let's reduce this to like 0.5 uh 0.5 and 0.5 in z and as for moving the cube it bit in front of the camera so if you come to the ar camera you can see that the camera is actually looking like this side so basically it's the cube z axis so in the z axis like you can see the z axis increasing so increase the z to say 1 i think 1 will be fine here and save so that's it for the scene and also in our script we actually took a boolean variable named object is placed which was actually checking whether the object we want to augment is there in the scene already so after we have placed the object we need to change this to true so this would ensure that uh, once the object is placed we won't be able to place or change the position of the object it is fixed in our scene uh, if you want to make a scene where uh, you are able to instantiate the now numerous number of objects it can be done in another way this is not exactly the way for that uh, in that case you won't be needing a variable like this so now let's go back to unity ignore this this is nothing so go to file build settings and now if you build it should run properly and you should be able to see the cube in proper scale and in front of your camera so now that we know how to augment a simple cube using markerless ar over any horizontal plane we want let us augment something a bit more interesting than a cube so as i already told you that we will be actually making a game ar basketball game 
uh, by the end of part two of this video. Uh, let us augment the AR basketball hoop we'll be using for the game uh, instead of this default boring cube. So let us first delete this cube. And uh, if we see here below in the assets folder of mine, there are two 3D models here. One is that of a basketball and the other is of a basketball hoop. Uh, the link to download both the models will be provided in the description below. So you don't have to worry about that. So let us drag this basketball hoop over onto a scene. And here we can see the hoop here. Let us make this a child of prefab to be placed. So now we have the basketball hoop in our scene. The first problem that you will see is that uh, the basketball hoop is and also the AR camera is actually facing towards the same direction. But if you think uh, in our game, we want the hoop to face towards the player so that the player can shoot the ball and score the basket, of course. So, so in other words, we want the uh, basketball hoop to be facing towards the camera. So let us rotate this in the Y axis by 180 degrees. So here if we go, uh, we actually see that the hoop actually has a rotation of 180 degrees. So let us reset this rotation to zero. And now if you see the AR camera and the hoop are facing in opposite direction. So now all you need to do is play around with position of this hoop a bit. You have to place this hoop a bit in front of the camera so that the user can see the hoop properly. Uh, so for me, I found that a Z of 10 and in y minus 5 seemed like a good position for my game as for the scale i found that 1.2 scale in all the three axes seemed good for the game uh, of course you are free to play around with this to find the position and scale that suits you the best this was just my preference uh, after this uh, let's give some color to this boring white basketball hoop so for giving the colors, there are many different ways. The way I will be showing you is that whenever you import a 3D model into Unity, uh, if you go into the model itself, there are a few options available here. So model, rig, animation, and materials. So in the materials tab, you see there are three materials on this hoop itself. So glass, metal, and red. So to color this uh, hoop, uh, we'll be actually extracting this material over to a folder. Uh, you can extract it right here, but I want to keep it a bit organized. So let's make a materials folder. And then from basketball, let's choose extract materials and materials. So now you need to extract the materials. And now if you see previously, those were not uh, extracted. So now glass is pointing to glass material, which has been extracted. So basically, whatever change you make, to these materials, which has been extracted over in the materials folder, as you specified. If you have specified any other folder, it will be present there. So if you make any changes to these materials here, it will be reflected on the hoop itself. So let us first configure this metal material. So let's make it a bit dark, sort of black. Increase the metallicness and a bit smooth maybe. Uh, this looks good enough for me. After this, let's go for the red material. So let's choose a good red color. Increase the smoothness. And a bit metallic maybe. Yeah, this looks good to me. Uh, as for the glass material, you need to change one uh, property. So all the materials used here, uh, using the standard shader of course, uh, has a rendering mode. So here uh, for both the metal and the red, the rendering mode is opaque. But for glass, we know that glass is transparent. So for glass, we need to change this rendering mode from opaque to transparent. And the moment we change it to transparent, we can see some difference here actually. So let me switch it back to opaque again. So here we cannot see the grid that is behind this glass. But if we change it to transparent, we can actually see this grid here. So it's sort of behaving like a transparent. To make it more transparent, we can drop this alpha all the way to zero. So it's completely transparent now. So yeah, the glass is ready. Now all you need to do is go to build. Let's save the scene first, of course. After that, you can just go to File, Build. 
and then build wherever you want i'll be just building it here this will take a bit of time but after it's building you should be able to place the basketball hoop instead of the cube that you was placing previously into the scene so we will be using this basketball hoop in the second part so stay tuned and let's move on so that was it for this video in the next video we will be using this basketball hoop we placed today to make a cool ar basketball game thank you for watching this video do share this video with your friends and join the exorfilic discord server to keep the ar community growing if you have any doubts or face any problems you can comment it down below or you can ask it in the exorfilic discord server itself the link to the server will be provided in the description below stay tuned for our next video which will be dropping next sunday until then thank you